Hey there, this is Scott from McKenna Scrollcraft. I'm going to show you today how I draw patterns for my scroll saw. I draw all my patterns by hand using a drawing tablet and a stylus. Today we're going to be using a photograph reference for a portrait. We're going to be drawing Audrey Hepburn, so follow along and see how I do it. Alright, so first we're going to go and select the image that we want to turn into a pattern. And I will open up this image of Audrey Hepburn here. Alright, and there she is. And a lot of times when I get a photograph or I take one offline, the resolution's really small, so it's going to be difficult to work with. So one of the first things I do is adjust the image resolution, the image size. Uh, I like to be at, at least 2,500 to 3,000 pixels. And there we go. Blew that up a little bit. And next I like to add a couple of layers. Uh, the first layer I'm going to add is going to be a transparent layer that's going to be on top. That's the layer that I'm actually going to use to draw. And the second layer is going to be the background. The background I'll set as the background color. Uh, I have black and white. Black is my foreground color. That's what I'm going to use to draw. White will be the background. So there we go. And a lot of times if I'm using a color image, I like to duplicate the layer because I'm going to edit one of the layers and I like to save the original to compare for some details at the end. But this one's already black and white. So what I would do there is adjust the saturation, which I just did. And next I'm going to adjust the brightness. Brighten it up. That'll make it a lot easier to see the pencil strokes that I've done. And so next I'm going to go over here and make sure that I select the transparent layer that's on top because that's the one I'm going to be drawing on. I'm going to go over, select the pencil tool, check the pencil thickness, the stroke thickness. I like to set that at about three pixels. And with all my portraits that I do, I always start with the eyes. That's kind of my central focal point. It really brings out the most character in the pictures. That's what I like to draw the most attention to. So I like to start with those and kind of work out from there. And then I'll just take the stylus and kind of outline the dark areas. I know what I'm drawing, so I'm taking a little bit of artist license. And here a thing with this one, this one's this photograph's been touched up, airbrushed, so they took glare away from her eyes which the glare actually makes it a lot more realistic and a lot more full of life when you're doing a pattern. So I'm going to actually improvise, put a little glare in there, uh, even though there wasn't one there. So hopefully that'll work out when it's all done, make it look a little bit more lifelike. And so we're just filling in that shape. Then I'm going to go over and get the bucket fill tool fill that shape and that's just kind of a rough rough detailed area not really going to worry about it too much for now I'll go back and touch it up see what I need to adjust later and you notice here that I'm going to skip over the crease in the eyelid that's not really an important detail I'd rather focus on the more important details I always translate perfectly to the pattern so it you can't really just trace it and go with it there's a lot of adjustments you got to make a lot of photographs kind of have like a curvature to them which it looks perfectly fine if you're looking at a photograph but if you see the the pattern that was directly copied from the photograph it makes it look kind of awkward and misshapen so you got to keep that in mind but that's one of the later details you work on and continuing with the second eye, uh, I'm gonna. There's a lot of shadow over there that I'm trying to separate the eyelashes from, and 
to make the eyelashes prominent but not mix it in with the shadow so you can see me doing it right there and also on this eye it's easy to see that the the glare from the flash is airbrushed out and so I will go back later and try to add a little glare to it leaving the glare out uh, just kind of makes it look a little cartoonish kind of unfinished in this area here the eyebrow kind of goes into the hairline and if I were to separate the eyebrow from the hairline it would kind of make it the, like I said a cartoonish kind of look so for this one I'm just going to kind of meld the the two shapes together the hair and the eyebrow and then kind of like before just kind of improvising the shape not just tracing over the dark areas And with a bucket fill tool, it doesn't always fill in all the pixels. There's some unfilled pixels that get trapped, so I'll just touch those up as I go so I don't forget them. And at this point, it's going to be a little bit repetitive, so I'm going to speed the video up so you can see what I'm doing, but not in real time. And pretty often I'll go back and forth between the pattern and the original photograph to give it a little side-by-side -side comparison, see how it's coming along as I go, and make adjustments as needed. Uh, at this point, it's pretty obvious that I wanted that glare to be in that left eye. So I kind of referenced the direction of light and the rest of the photograph so it kind of matches. So I'm going to give a little erase right there. See if I can match the glare to the other one. Looking better, but not perfect, so I'll go back and touch that up a little bit later. I'll admit, the mouth on this one was definitely a challenge. I touched that up pretty consistently while I was working on it. Audrey Hepburn has those big puffy lips and the photograph has clearly been doctored a little bit so drawing the pattern true to what the photograph is when you look at it it, it just makes it kind of look goofy so this is another one of those instances where I kind of deviate from going true to how the photograph is. I know at this point it's going pretty fast but you can kind of see that every once in a while I'll draw a shape and I'm not really happy with it when I back out and so I just undo it and redo it again there's no no harm in trying to correct something that you don't really like and you'll see here her right arm is really hard to see so at this point this is why I like to save the original copy of the photograph a lot of times I'll go back and reference it to see if I get a get a better view of where the arm is, where I should put the line, and then I'll draw a really thin line there. My kind of general rule of thumb, using a three pixel width pencil, I like to keep the lines about seven pixels wide, maybe six. And as far as bridges go, I like to keep those about a minimum of seven pixels wide. I personally mostly use spiral blades, and I find that's the minimum thickness that I really feel comfortable with, with a size zero or double zero, if I were to print this pattern out as in eight and a half by 11. And here I find dark hair to be a lot easier to do than light hair, because dark hair, you can just kind of draw in the shape of it and use the, the highlights, the shimmer, the hair as the bridges. Blonde hair is a pretty similar technique, it's just a little bit more difficult to get the shadows of the hair just right with blonde hair. Then finally at this point I got the majority of the pattern done. I'm just kind of flipping back and forth between the pattern and the picture. I'm just kind of seeing where I want to touch it up, make it mesh a little bit, 
like I said, I'm really going at the mouth and the eyes, uh, just trying to get them right. And then I settled with the final details, and I think this one's pretty much good to go. So here's the final product. I like to add a faux wooden background to it to kind of give me an idea of how it's going to look when it's finally cut on wood. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. If you want me to highlight any other areas, any other questions or concerns, just let me know.